All right. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Unity Center of Light. Um, I recognize all the faces this morning, so I think you all know who I am. But um, just in case, I'll say I'm April, May, born in March. Um, and um, just in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> and um, today is Sunday, September the 15th. And um, Butch and Pamela are not with us today, but we are um, privileged and honored to have Reverend Kathleen Kerswig with us as our guest speaker today and Jennifer Parday here with us uh, to share some special music. And boy, we have some treats for the music. So um, please um, stay with us after the lesson and meditation for that. So, all right. Well, I'd like to share with you this morning um our uh, mission and our foundation um statements and ask you to um participate in them with me and that would be really easy if i could pull them up on the screen so let's try that again okay here we go And you guys all know these, so please do join with me. The mission of Unity Center of Light is to empower individuals to express their indwelling divine identity. We teach there is a power within each of us far greater than anything that exists outside of us. And our foundation statement, there is only one power and one presence active in my life and affairs, God, the good, omnipotent. Amen. So what I'd like to do now is invite Pamela Charity Leak to share with us the daily word for today. Good morning, everyone. Today's daily word message is blessed. All things work together for good in my life, and I am blessed. If someone asks me how I'm feeling, I may smile and simply respond, I am blessed. I may have bills to pay, maybe a few aches and pains, but I remain aware I am an expression of God. I know wherever I am, whatever I am doing, God can never be further away than my next thought. While I may not believe challenging events are blessings, I will likely feel blessed when I respond from an awareness of God's guiding, loving presence within me. Rather than reacting anxiously, I proceed calmly and with confidence, trusting divine order. Knowing I am blessed, I radiate faith that I pray helps others recognize the blessings in their own lives. Our scripture reading today is from Numbers 6 verses 24 to 26 and it reads, The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you, Pamela. That's a perfect daily word for today. And it sounds like it's going to go great with Kathleen's message. Um, so I don't see anybody here this morning that's with us for the first time. Um, anybody here that's new that I'm not seeing? Or do you just feel new today? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, we'll, uh, we'll take an opportunity later in the service to check again and see if anybody else comes in that may be new with us. So um, today really is a pleasure to be able to welcome Reverend Kathleen. Um, I know her as KK, um, 
And I was acquainted with her through my work with the Unity Eastern Region. Um, Kathleen is, has ministered to a number of Unity ministries in the, the Eastern Region, uh, Unity Church of Central uh, Mass. And she also is a guest speaker at our church at Unity in uh, Unity Radiant Light and also others uh, uh, that I'm probably not even aware of. But um, we are blessed to have her back with us again. And when she told me what she was going to be speaking on today, what if, then what? I said, ooh, that sounds like a perfect message for me for our, and for our world right now, too, right? So um, just please join me in opening your hearts and welcoming Kathleen um, with us today. What a beautiful introduction. Thank you very much. I hope I uh, live up to all of that good stuff. My my goodness. We're sure um, you will. <laughs> okay, good. Well, um, as April said, I'm uh, Kathleen. I call me Kathleen, call me KK. Um, I grew up in Unity, um, not grew up, I founded in 2009 um, in my late 40s. And, um, but I happened to stumble into the church that Jim Rosemurgy was leader, leading. And because of that, I was able to, um, I was able to learn from one of the best, right? We have a lot of wonderful sources, uh, resources in Unity, but um, I was blessed uh, to work for him for four years as his office administrator. And um, somehow that led me uh, into ministry. And that certainly was not the goal at the time. Um, the goal was to just kind of be around his presence and to be around other unity people and and um and here i am in front of you today as an ordained unity minister so go figure hang on for the ride folks when you find unity i know that we're just coming off of world day of prayer on thursday actually wednesday night uh unity village had a service and uh and then we had world day of prayer on thursday and the theme was um, moving mountains, uh, having faith enough to move mountains. And so I'm going to tie that in to this title of what if then what. Um, but I first want to tell you how this all came about. This is the fourth or fifth time that I'm giving this talk. The first time was in 2016. And in 2016, it became apparent to me that I had gone through an awful lot of what if questions. When I was younger, from a very young age, and I'm talking about probably when I first started to go to kindergarten, I wondered things like, what if they don't like me? What if they don't put me in their favorite group? And then I grew up and I got older and it was, what if something bad happens? What if I fail? What if they figure out, I don't know who they was, but what if they figure out that I don't know what I'm doing? A lot of what if questions. And so I kind of pursued that a little bit back in 2016. I was preparing for my very first talk to be given at Unity of Fort Myers. Uh, Jim had asked me to fill in for him on Father's Day. He was going to be away. And I was an LUT candidate at that time. I, I was not a, um, yeah, I hadn't even been credentialed as an LUT yet. Um, and so I was thinking about this topic and I thought long and hard and I realized that those questions of what if had begun to change the moment I found unity. Some questions turned into what if everything I thought I knew was really not right? What if I've been wrong about everything? That was a scary question. The reason I thought that was because I was raised in a traditional uh, Catholic church upbringing, right? My mother was a very strict Catholic, followed the rules to the T. In fact, she was such a rule follower that when the Pope would say it's okay to eat meat on Fridays, it was not okay with my mother. So we never, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't translate. That's how much of a rule follower she was, right? But when I stumbled into unity after a very painful and emotional divorce uh, where I was feeling like I was lost, 
completely. I stumbled into this community where I found out that it was okay to question anything and everything. And I started to begin to realize that everything I thought I knew, I really didn't know. And that I was going to have to unlearn a lot of what I was raised with in order to be open enough to open my heart and my mind to these unity teachings to be able to enhance my human experience by living these spiritual um, by these spiritual principles. So the question then became in 2016 what if something good can happen? Holy cow, right? What if my past is not my future? What? Some of us who might be familiar with people in the recovery community know a lot about that, right? Recovering from addictions, and it doesn't matter what the addiction is. It can be food, it can be sex, it can be drugs, it can be alcohol, whatever the addiction is, right? What if that past does not have to be my future? What if I can let go of some of this stuff? Move forward. What if? Then what? What am I going to do with all this time if I'm not worried about all these things, about what people think about me and all that stuff? What will I do? What's it going to look like? So in 2016, when I gave this talk for the first time, I ended with the question, what if I change my mind? For several years in that community, I had assured everyone in that community that I would never become a unity minister. I told them LUT was enough. I didn't need to have the hassles of the administration of, of running a church, right? Um, and, and so, nope not going to be a minister and it was at that service in June of 2016 that I said what if I change my mind two days ago I sent in my application for ministerial school and I got a standing ovation from a wonderful group of people in that beautiful new building that we had built down there uh, when Jim was the minister and um, it just filled my heart with joy right because when I say, what if I change my mind, it was a big change that was going on for me to think about going through a five-year program to become a minister. And then what? What's it going to look like? Right? Fast forward a couple of years later, I moved up to New England from Florida. I was kind of auditioning to be the spiritual leader at Unity of Central Massachusetts. And I did the talk again. And it evolved, right? My questions changed. What if they don't likely like me became, what if UCM doesn't want me, right? What if, what if the people there don't resonate with me? And of course, all of those worries were um, not needed. It's a beautiful community. I got to be their spiritual leader for three years. But I was able to introduce myself a little bit to them, to tell them about that scared little girl who grew up into a scared adult who then transformed because of unity and just being open to some of the ideas that are presented with us, right? So I did get hired as the spiritual leader there, and I was in ministerial school and leading that church and working full time uh, for three wonderful years. Uh, the only reason that I stepped down was because uh, a couple of my immediate family members were having very serious health challenges and I needed to be available for them. And so that's why I stepped down from that. But I still guest speak there once a month. And uh, we love each other and, and uh, love talking about the unity principles, right? So what if they don't like me turned into what if they do like me and they still like me, right? That's the then what. They still like me. Yay. But it's not about ple people pleasing. It's about sharing from the heart what I learned from unity, about keeping that open mind and open heart and being able, being allowed, right, because I was never allowed, to ask questions. Do I really believe in oneness? Do I really believe in, um, you know, uh, forgiveness? 
Do I believe that forgiveness will work for me? Those kinds of things. There's lots of questions that come up in unity. Prosperity issues. What's my consciousness about? All of that comes from this little question, this little beginning of what if? What if? So now let's move into present day. I'm going to take you into a meditation in a few minutes about this, but I want you to open your minds and your hearts to your what if questions. For instance, because we're living in such a tumultuous time, because we, it appears to me, I don't know about you, but to me it appears like there's a lot of chaos going on, right? There is a lot of chaos going on, and it's very hard to sometimes remember that we are all at our core, that at our core we all have that Christ presence within us, right? It's kind of hard to see that in some people in Washington, D.C. No matter which side of the coin you're on, it's hard to see these days when violence is erupting, all of that. So the big question right now becomes, what if I can make a difference? I don't know if there's anybody here or not who's ever felt this way, but I'm going to share that sometimes I get to a place where I feel like I'm one person and nothing I do is really going to make that much of a difference anyway. Right? I have that human thought. The thing is that I've trained myself to take those kinds of thoughts into meditation and see what spirit has to say. Right? And I usually come back with an answer that, of course, I can make a difference. If I can make a difference during this talk for one person to leave here thinking, okay, what if I can do something to help someone somewhere? If I can just get one person to think that way, I'm good. If I can get more of you to join me in this, that's even better, right? But the focus is on what if I can make a difference? I'm going to suggest that you can. But only you will know what that difference is or what it is that you want to try to do. Opportunities present themselves all the time. Right? We have an unlimited supply of what we tend to call the 12 powers. Right? We have these 12 powers or faculties or abilities within us. The first one being that power of faith. That power of faith that's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus is quoted as saying, all you need is the faith the size of a mustard seed, which is very, very small. Right? And if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. See how I did that? I tied it right into World Day of Prayer. Did you like that? Yeah. <laughs> what if? Then? Okay. You'll get used to my sense of humor. Right? But that's what Jesus is quoted as saying. That all you need is that faith. That small faith and you can move a mountain. Now, I'm going to say to you, I really don't care if I move a mountain. I live in the mountains of Green in Greenfield, Massachusetts. There's mountains all around me. I'm at the foot of the Mohawk Trail up here in New England, and uh, it's just beautiful, and there's mountains all around me. So truthfully, I don't really want to move them because I love the view, right? But I think the moving of the mountain that I'm thinking of, that maybe you might be thinking of, is what difference can I make? during this time uh, before the elections, let's say. What difference can I make during this time when there might be some violence showing up at a school? What if I can make a difference? Now some of us are into taking more action than others. Remember that prayer is taking action. 
Remember that meditation is taking action because you're shifting the vibration in yourself. And when you change it in yourself, you change it around you. And when you go out into the world, people just feel something different from you. It takes commitment, right? It takes this willingness to put some effort into it to put some intention into it. What can I do? Can, what if I can move mountains? I've heard some wonderful stories uh, recently online about families coming together. You know, over the recent, I don't know, since what, 2015, 2016, a lot of families have experienced this divide right because of differing opinions on which way our country should go and so they've they've really they've fought with family members etc but i'm telling you what the stories are there about these wonderful things where they come together whether it's because they're willing to listen to the other family member or they're willing to listen to each other or make a conscious decision that they're going to try to understand the other person these are very difficult things to do in today's world and it's happening it may not happen all the time right we have to take care of ourselves we don't want to put ourselves in toxic situations for some of us, there are traumatic events that happened to us years and years ago. I happen to be one of them. And so in today's world, I still have certain triggers that sometimes come up for me. So I have to take care of myself. So I'm not here to say that every person here has to fix every divide in every situation. I'm just throwing out possibilities, right? I'll tell you what I'm doing about trying to change mountain, to move mountains. Um, I'm fueled by the, the uh, World Day of Prayer affirmation was fueled by faith, we can move mountains. And one of the things that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to change my languaging. I change my languaging about God, the divine spirit source, whatever you call it. Um, sometimes I hear prayers or I even want to say prayers that kind of indicate a little bit of separation from that higher power from God right so what I want to do is I want to remember that I already have what I need I may not feel that way physically in my human form I may not feel like I've got everything I need right? But I do, I have all that I need. I need to become aware of that, right? So instead of my prayers being, um, dear God, please may all people be happy. That's a lovely sentiment, yes? How about if we change that up just a little bit and we go, dear God, may everyone remember that they are filled with happiness. They are already filled with happiness, with joy, with peace, whichever item you want to throw in there. My prayer for the world is that people begin to understand that peace is already here within us. I believe my calling is to try and share that peace with others. I believe that I do my best to try and bring that to any situation. I have a full-time uh, job with regular, normal Earth people who know nothing about unity, right? And I do my best every time I can to bring some peace to what might be a difficult meeting or dealing with an upset coworker who got in trouble for something. I can be that calming, peaceful presence and that's how I'm bringing peace to the world, right? I don't think we're going to wake up tomorrow and see the headline that says, Reverend KK brings peace to the world. I don't think that's what it's going to say. But I do believe that every time I get the opportunity, I want to take advantage of it. Right? All things work together for our good. 
How many times have you been faced with a challenge and not really felt it? Like, I know there's a blessing in, in here somewhere, but boy, I'm not sure where it is, right? I can only speak for myself. I cannot speak for others, but I can say for myself, every single challenge, and I've had some very difficult ones, every single challenge has made me stronger, has brought me blessings that I didn't see right away, that maybe I saw a year or two or five years later, but every single experience has brought me to this point where I get to share this with you, where I get to suggest that maybe we do this together. What are the what if questions that you want to ask yourself? Then what? Right? And if you find yourself going down a negative road, bring yourself back to what if things are good? What if something good happens? It's a great tool for me. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to bring it to you, uh, to suggest it. I, it definitely ties in with that theme of moving mountains, having enough faith that you could move a mountain. We can do amazing things. We can all do amazing things simply because we know we are made in the image and likeness of God of the divine, whatever you want to call it, right? There is a divine energy within each of us. And we're going to move into a meditation now where maybe we can activate some of that divine energy within us. So it will motivate us to move out into the real world. We're all in the real world already. I don't know why I say it that way. But we can go out the front door of our houses and we can go out into the community and we can go to our jobs and we can go other places and we can share these amazing abilities that we already have. So I'm going to invite you now to uh, prepare for a short meditation. Um, if you have anything in your lap, if you're holding anything, just Put it aside for now and begin by taking some nice deep breaths, cleansing breaths, feel the air moving in and flowing through your whole body and then coming back up and out the nostrils and or the mouth. You may close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. May the words that I speak now be the words of your own heart. Today I am open to all possibilities. I am ready to ask the question, what if? What if peace is already here? What if I already have all that I need? And what if all things actually do work together? for the highest good. Wherever I am, I am home. I am right where I am supposed to be.
What if I can actually move mountains? We take these thoughts into the silence. Wherever I am, I am home. I am right where I am supposed to be. In this moment, I affirm I already have all that I need. In this moment, I affirm peace is already here. In this moment, I affirm that all things work together for the highest good. I am committed to remaining open I open my mind and my heart to consider new possibilities. I open my mind and my heart to share with others, to share my thoughts, to share spiritual principles, in this moment I declare I can make a difference. And in this moment I declare that fueled by faith, we can move mountains. So now if you'll take another deep breath, exhale out slowly and deliberately. Feel that beautiful divine energy moving inside of you and all around you. The divine is in 
every cell of our being. We are so grateful for this understanding of this truth. And our gratitude shows in our words and our actions, not just today, but every day. And so it is. Amen. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you so much. We are so blessed, without a doubt.